Hello everyone. I am Professor Priyanka Mane from Department of Electrical Engineering, KIT College of Engineering, Autonomous Kolhapur. Once again, I welcome you all for the course Fundamentals of Electrical Engineering. In this course, we have started with the unit number one, that is DC Electric Circuit and Magnetic Circuit. In last three classes, we have completed the contents regarding DC Electric Circuit. Now, from today onwards, we will start with the Magnetic Circuit. So, before actually starting with the content, we will just discuss about what are the basics of magnetic circuits. So, let's start with the introduction. Now, we know this electricity and magnetism, these two correlated are with each other. When electric current flows in a conductor, the magnetic flux will be produced around it. So, this is called as magnetic effect of the electric current. In same way, by using electric current, we can produce the magnetism. So, many of the electrical devices we can consider such as motor, generator, number of relays are there, okay, they require the magnetic flux for their operation. So, with these units, okay, with these contents, okay, we require the body of the core, okay, which will be having the magnetic material such as steel or high grade silicon steel for their operation. So, this magnetic flux which is produced by the electricity, these are called as magnetic lines of forces. So, these magnetic lines of forces are having certain properties. So, in this figure we can see over this, this is the magnetic, this is the magnetic field which is produced due to this electricity or some of the natural magnets are there, okay, they will be having its own magnetic lines of forces. So, we will discuss the properties of this magnetic lines of force one by one. So, this magnetic lines of force, they are used for representing the magnetic field of the particular magnet. So, by using this magnetic field of the magnet, we will just, we will introduce the magnetic lines of forces. So, the path line along which isolated end pole, okay, which is moved is called as magnetic lines of force. We will just have the force of attraction, okay for the different different poles that means when n pole and s poles they are brought together or closer they will have the attraction force but whereas n pole and n pole that means similar poles okay they will repel each other this is the very basic property of the magnetic lines of force the magnetic lines of force they have a definite direction from n pole to s pole outside the magnet but from s pole to n pole they will travel inside the magnet then these lines of forces, they never intersect each other. Rather, while just traveling, okay, parallelly, they will have the tendency to repel each other. Therefore, they will be having the effect of fringing, which we are going to discuss, okay, in upcoming classes. They will just behave as a stretched elastic band, okay, just like elastic band, they, they will just behave, okay, stretched elastic band. And each magnetic lines of force, it is a closed path that means it is going to start from n pole it will go towards s pole outside the magnet and it will just travel from s pole to n pole inside the magnet so all those properties we need to consider while studying the magnetic lines of forces and its properties now we will have some uh, discussion regarding the basic concepts of magnetism so very basic concept we call it as magnetic flux which is denoted by phi so, this magnetic flux is nothing but the collection of all the magnetic lines of forces collectively of the particular magnet. So, magnetic field, this is the region around where the magnetic flux is set up or present. So, a magnet with the high pole strength that produces a large number of magnetic lines of forces. We can measure the magnetic lines of forces or flux in Weber and one Weber is equals to, sorry there is a printing mistake over here, 10 raised to 8 magnetic lines of forces collectively. So, this is regarding the magnetic flux. So, here we can see this is the magnetic field, okay, here all the magnetic lines of forces are there. So, this is one magnetic material we have and we are going to pass the current from this coil. So, we will have the magnetic field over here around this magnetic pole or conductor we can call it as this electromagnet and we are having the magnetic lines of flux or my simply magnetic flux that we can measure in Weber. Next concept is electromagnet. So, basically an electromagnet is nothing but which is a current coil conductor or coil it will be wound on a soft magnetic core. So, as you can see in this figure this is one magnetic material and on this we are going to wound or coil and we are going to pass the current. So, by using this current it will produce the magnetic field. 
सो दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेट और टेम्पररी मैग्नेट बिकॉज अंटिल एंड अनलेस द करंट विल बी देयर द मैग्नेटिक फील्ड विल बी देयर वंस द करंट इज रिमूव द करंट इज नॉट गोइंग टू पास फ्रॉम दिस कॉइल the magnetism is loses okay that means it will lose the magnetism property so this is also called as temporary magnet so basically this current coil uh, current carrying con conductor or coil that will produce the magnetic flux and it can exhibit the property of the magnet so it will lose the magnetic uh, properties as soon as the current passing through the coil reduces to zero so you can use this application of electromagnet in armature winding of the dc motor electromechanical relay dc generator etc there are many more applications of this electromagnet we can see the next very important concept is magnetomotive force just like in case of electrical circuit we have the emf so in case of magnetic circuit we have the mmf magnetomotive force so mmf is the source that produces the magnetic flux in a magnetic circuit that means this is the force which is responsible to set the magnetic flux in the magnetic circuit the unit of mmf is nothing but ampere turn and it is denoted by f so mmf f equals to number of turns into current flowing through that conductor or coil so where uh, n into i ampere turns so n is the number of turns of the magnetizing coil and r is the current flowing through that conductor or coil in ampere the next concept in the magnetic circuit is reluctance in case of electrical circuit we have seen the property of resistance so in similar way here we have the reluctance which is denoted by s so reluctance is the opposition to the flow of magnetic flux in the material unit of reluctance is ampere turn per weber so s is given by k into l divided by a k is nothing but the constant of proportionality l is nothing but the active length of the magnetic circuit in meter and a is the cross sectional area in meter square so basically s equals to l upon mu 0 mu r into a where l is again length that is dimension of the direction of the magnetic flux a is the area cross sectional area which is perpendicular to the direction of the flux and mu 0 is the permeability of free space which is 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 henry per meter and mu r is nothing but the relative permeability of the material so this regarding permeability we will discuss later on so next we will discuss about the magnetic flux density b so magnetic flux density is the flux per unit area perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic lines of forces at that particular point so basically this unit of magnetic flux density is weber per meter square or simply tesla so b is given by phi upon a so respect to flux to the respective area which is called as magnetic flux density next we have the concept of magnetic field strength which is denoted by h so this is the force experienced by a unit north pole placed at that particular point the unit of magnetic field strength h is equal to n divided by weber that means number of turns per weber h equals to ampere turns per unit length in meter so simply it is given by 80 divided by m so b equals to here mu 0 mu r into h where mu 0 again relative permeable sorry permeability of the free space air or vacuum and mu r is nothing but the relative permeability of the medium so from this equation we can get the relation between b and h okay so before actually discussing the relation between b and h we will discuss about the permeability so permeability mu this is ability to carry the flux lines that means simply it will allows the magnetic flux to set up in the magnetic material that means if the material allows the magnetic flux to set up in the material that means that material is having high permeability if the material does not allow the magnetic flux to set up in that material that means it is having low permeability so we are having the examples of high permeability material such as iron steel or any kind of conducting medium we can take but whereas this wood glass and any kind of non conducting material will be having very low permeability that's why we are using iron or steel in most of the electrical materials to set up the magnetic flux lines and it will be having the ro low reluctance path okay so that the magnetic flux okay we will get more and the operation will be smoother 
Next we have the absolute permeability mu. So, this is the ratio of magnetic flux density in the medium to the magnetic field strength in the vacuum free space or air. That means, absolute permeability mu equals to B divided by H Henry per meter and B equals to mu into H Tesla. So, again we are having mu 0 and mu r. So, mu 0 is nothing but the permeability of a free space. So, permeability of the vacuum free space that is air or any kind of non magnetic material is constant. It is denoted by mu 0 and the value of mu 0 is equals to 4 pi into 10 raise to minus 7 Henry per meter. So, absolute permeability of a magnetic material is higher than the permeability of the vacuum or free space. Now, why we are having the permeability of free space? Because there is no any perfect insulator available for the magnetic flux to okay, confine. Because in case of electrical current, we can insulate the current by using perfect insulator. But in case of magnetic material or for the magnetic flux, okay, we cannot insulate. It can be set up in the air as well. Okay, or in the free space or vacuum okay, etc. Therefore, we need to consider the permeability of the free space that is mu 0 and it is having the constant value which is 4 pi into 10 raise to minus 7 Henry per meter. Next one relative permeability that is mu r this is related to particular magnetic material. So, it is the ratio of magnetic flux density at that particular point in the magnetic medium to the magnetic flux density at the same point okay, with air as the medium because for every relative permeability we need to consider mu 0 why because the surrounding air will be there around that particular material. So, here we have mu 0 equals to B upon B 0, but what is B? B equals to mu into H hence B 0 will be mu 0 into H and finally, we will get mu r equals to mu, zero, mu into H divided by mu 0 uh, H. So, mu r will be equals to mu upon mu 0. So, finally, these all are correlated to each other. So, I hope you understood the basic concepts related to magnetic circuit. In the next few classes, we will start with the again relation between B and H. Again, we will study the Kirchhoff's law for the magnetic circuit and many more concepts related to magnetic circuit. Thank you.